Doctrine and Devotion is sponsored by our friends at Media Gradier. Media Gradier is a small nonprofit ministry that makes amazing documentaries and multimedia Bible studies. This week, we want to tell you about their project, Puritan, All of Life to the Glory of God, the Deluxe Edition box set. Stay tuned for more details or head on over to themeansofgrace.org. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. Is, is now a bad time for you? What are you talking about? I mean, we're, we're recording. Why aren't you? And who are you? Uh, I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship, but I'm sitting here no. while you decide it's okay to open your lunch and begin to eat your lunch while we are recording. That's prosciutto right there. Yeah, I, I know what prosciutto is. Yeah, good. Yeah. What kind so of that made cheese? me a little. So that made me a little like a meat char- cheese, charcuterie yeah. board here. Mm-hmm. Well, There's no board, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be on there. You know. I'm Black, hungry. Black Forest ham. Mm-hmm. What did you got? Cheddar. You got some spicy like uh, sausage, pepperoni type things. Mm. Cheese. Mm-hmm. I'm hungry. You feel like now is the time to, to well, eat well, while well, we're doing it? When do I have time? When am I going to have time? You have hours a day uh, that's on your schedule as, you know, me personal time. time. Just as me time. Just as personal time. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> personal got, development. I got, I got, you know, my, she made me this and I'm thinking about her. And I'm hungry. And you're hungry. So you decided you're just going to eat mm-hmm. right now. This is all good for me too. Mm, I'm really proud there. of you. Really proud of you. No carbs. Good job. See that? Yeah, I can see yeah. it. Yeah. Keto. Are you doing the keto thing? Nah. Well, oh. kind of, sort of. Kind of? Yeah. I'm so, down like 13 ounces, man. 13 ounces? <laughs> <laughs> it's November, man. It feels good. November, it's cold out. Get to wear your jacket. Leaves are on the ground. Smells like fall out there. All the color changes on the trees. Uh, I'm digging it, man. Nice. Well, I'm, I'm glad it. to hear that. You can't enjoy it because when this episode releases, you're in Europe. So Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be enjoying that. Mm-hmm. Actually, the, when this episode releases, I, I will be... Uh, yeah, I'll be in uh, France. Yeah, with the Earls. Actually, we'll be uh, mm. in Amboise. We'll be Earls. in the Loire Valley region, the uh, the, re- the 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 Valley of the Castles. They got a royal name to the Earls. The Earls. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, they they they're gonna they're gonna fit right in. Mm-hmm. Greg with his handsome hair and face. Well, his hair is not that great. His hair is awesome. No, it's not. Yeah. It is not. No, Stop it. Not compared to yours, but compared but, to mine. Well, everyone. Is yeah, I know. To- I know. It's like you know. Come on. Are you full? Are you ready? Are we ready to do oh, this oh. or what? I'll probably nibble a little You're bit. You're going to nibble I'm gonna while we a little bit while we do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. What are we talking about? Well, we're going to uh, follow up on Christian liberty from time to time. And actually, quite often, we receive uh, messages uh, concerning, more often than not, seminary students that have yep. signed pledges mm-hmm. uh, to not drink or smoke while they are enrolled at school or not even just on campus, but they are students of the uh yeah. the facility yeah i went to moody lots of rules lots of rules at lots the time of rules. they've loosened up quite a bit but uh still have rules uh, then i went to southern seminary and uh they had some rules not as many um yeah so we understand that we get this from time to time and i know it's it's easy for people on either side to be like tired and annoyed by the question because it's either like oh just you know don't worry about it or why are you asking this question? But we get it. Like uh, we've all felt this before, and, we yeah. and most of us have had to deal with it. Jimmy and I have definitely uh, had to deal with it. So um, we got a few messages. Here's one. Uh, hey guys, I'm thankful for y'all's. Oh, hang on, I'm Wait. thankful for y'all and this ministry. I go to Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. That's a good Southern Baptist mm-hmm. seminary, and we have a covenant which prohibits alcohol, tobacco, vaping, CBD, and some other things. I'd like to know what the other things are. Uh, I understand that this is an institution, and so I respect and submit to their rules, but others around me either tell me about how they break the covenant and don't care or don't break it, but complain enough that I just wish they would. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, I'd love y'all's input and banter about school covenants and to what extent y'all think they should go. Thanks, y'all. 
I'm All pretty right. sure this individual is from down south. I'm pretty sure. You want banter? Let's talk about y'all. <laughs> Why does that annoy you? The uh, y'all annoys well, you? Well, I mean, it's. I get it. It's it's, it's a contraction. It's not mm-hmm. bad. Uh, it stands. It means you all. I, mm-hmm. I get it. But you, you use it that much. You're, you're asking for somebody to start poking fun at you, I feel like. so. And that is our liberty to poke fun. Uh, you know what? Do not step on my Christian liberty. <laughs> uh, no, man, good uh, good question. And um, yeah, we actually, we got another one from another guy, and I can't find it. We get too many messages from two different, too many streams. and uh, but So I, I tried to find it. I couldn't. But this was a guy that was working for, uh, I think he was working somewhere, and it was like a Christian company or something, and they had policies as well like this. And so, Jimmy... What would we say to people who are working for a company or are enrolled in a school Mm -hmm. that have uh, certain uh, cultural expectations, restrictions, prohibitions that in order to be a student or an employee, you have to not do certain things or do certain things? What do we tell them? What do we we, we say the same thing? Yeah, uh, You signed up for it. You agreed to it. Be responsible and keep your word. Yeah, it's 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 really it's not complicated. It, it, it isn't. It, this isn't like a, a deep, uh, perplexing sort of a thing that, that we have to work through. I, it, it, it is that simple. You've agreed. You, no, nobody's put a gun to your head. Yeah. No one made you go there. No so, one made you sign it. Right. Now, I know like uh, I, I actually have heard the argument uh, a few times now where somebody will be a student at a seminary and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? I never turned in the paper that says you have to sign it to agree to it. So I didn't sign the covenant. Mm. So now I can just do whatever I want. Yeah, no big no no problem with me. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just do my, I'm gonna get my drink on and I'm gonna I'm gonna get my smoke on. Yeah, but see that that doesn't matter. You might have found a loophole, but this isn't this isn't court, right? Yeah. Uh, this is between you and God and the school or company that you work for. And yeah. so uh when you when you signed up for it, when you're attending there, you know the rules, right? Like, you know the rules, you know the regulations, you know the standards, you know what they're asking of you. So despite the fact that whether you did or did not sign or turn in the piece of paper, you had still agreed to those rules. Yeah. And and guess what? Uh, by not signing and turning in the thing that they've requested that you sign and turn in, <laughs> you're, 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 you're sitting there too. Yeah. Like you were supposed to do that. And I know like what really drives a lot of this uh, are, are, is when, you know, some schools or institutions or, or companies will present this as a biblical concept, right? So when I was at Moody, they would say, we are not saying that drinking alcohol is a sin. We are simply saying that you will not drink alcohol while you're a student at Moody. Yeah. So like I said, we're not saying it's a biblical issue. Uh, we're saying that this is how we operate. And so you're, you're, you are not to do it. And so the biblical part is – You've agreed. Keep your word. That's that's been the the fundamental argument. But so like what what bothers people is when the institutions in particular say and present it as if this is a biblical thing. If you do this, you're going against uh, God's word. Um, and so when they say that, when they go, well, this isn't biblical, uh, what we would encourage you to consider is like, well, no. OK, so they're wrong there. OK. They're wrong, and and no institution or company or school is going to be right in everything. They're yeah. going to have errors, just like you do, just like we do. Um, it's their culture, maybe. Uh, it definitely is their culture, at least. But uh, you're there again. You signed up. You've got to deal with it or leave. Yeah. You do have the option of leaving. You could go to another school. You could get another job. I'm not suggesting that that would be easy, but it certainly would be a better option than going against your word. Yeah. And so we want to talk about why this is a big deal. And you know what? We're going to tell you why it is. But first, we want to talk about Media Gratier. Love Media Gratier, man. They, they put out these uh, multimedia Bible studies and documentaries that are super high quality, very legit, very encouraging, theologically sound, educational, and fun. And uh, this for this episode, uh, we're promoting a project that they made called Puritan, All of Life to the Glory of God the deluxe edition box set. Jimmy and I are going to go through that whole thing ourselves mm-hmm. uh, this fall going into winter. This is a great on-ramp. This, this particular series is a great on-ramp for Christians who maybe aren't as familiar with the Puritans. Uh, and so with this, they can begin to interact with them and it, it is really going to set them up uh, so that they can pick up a Puritan book and go ahead and dig in. 
And so this package uh, contains, well, there's six DVDs, a feature-length documentary, lots of special features, and 35 Sunday school lessons on Puritan biographies and Puritan themes, an accompanying workbook for the lessons, a beautiful cloth-bound book from Joel Beakey and Michael Reeves, posters and postcard prints, and the film features, uh, high, like they, they feature like Al Mohler, uh, Conrad, Conrad, that. My, that I'm getting tongue-tied on watching you what? eat your ham as if it's like grapes being dropped this is not down. Ham. This is prosciutto. Prosciutto, but it's, you're, you're eating it from above. Yeah, dropping it's a long it down. Beast. What are you doing? Stop it. It's really... Conrad Mabiwe, is that who it is? I can't even... Yep, there's yeah. there. Uh, Jeff Thomas, Gloria Furman, Ian Hamilton, Jeremy Walker, J.I. Packer, Joel Beakey, John MacArthur, John Piper, John Snyder, Kevin DeYoung, Leland Riken, Lincoln Duncan, Mark Dever, Michael Reeves, Rosaria Butterfield, Sinclair Ferguson, Stephen Nichols, and Stephen Lawson. Oh, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. Listen, this set retails for 150 bucks. Now, you can get it from Media Gradier right now for 115 at themeansofgrace.org. But because they know that we have the best listeners around, they've got a, they have a special mm -hmm. extra discount. You use the, the promo code DEVO, that's D-E-V-O, and you can save an additional 10 bucks on the already reduced deluxe edition box set, taking it from 150 down to $105. This makes a great Christmas present. Uh, so it's perfect timing for that. So go ahead and get in on it. They plus they have t-shirts, really nice t-shirts. They're the listen, these are quality t-shirts. It's the same t-shirt that we use, like the mm -hmm. canvas t-shirts. So really cool designs. You want to get some Puritan tees, go ahead and get these. Original, good, can't get them anywhere else. So head on over to the meansofgrace.org. All right, so back to this problem. Okay. Um when we say we're not going to do something, sign a, a covenant. And then we do that thing. We are breaking the ninth commandment. It's Ooh. fundamentally what we're doing. Now, I know y'all don't know what the ninth commandment is because nobody ever taught you the Ten Commandments. But <laughs> the ninth commandment is you shall, not, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, right? And now <clears throat> we would encourage you to read Thomas Watson on uh, the ninth commandment. You can just pick up his book. We'll link to that in the show notes. Thomas Watson on the Ten Commandments. But if you just go to monergism.com and in the search bar, uh, type in Ninth Commandment, they will have a ton of resources yeah. exploring the Ninth Commandment because the Ninth Commandment is not simply don't lie. It is that, but there's so much more to it that relates to um, not just keeping your word, but um, protecting those, standing up for those people who are being lied against mm -hmm. and all of that. But as it relates to what we're looking at specifically today, Thomas Watson uh, summarized that one of the ways that we violate the ninth commandment is by lying. Yeah. And here uh, there's three, three ways that we do that, right? Uh, we one speak that which is false. So actually just uttering the lie ourselves. Mm -hmm. So bearing false witness. Uh, and so even in the sense here for, for this saying that we're going to abide by this, this covenant and then not following through with that. Right, right. He says that there's, you know, witnessing to that which is false. So in other words, somebody else has uttered the lie, you're backing it up. And then there's swearing to that which is false. All of this comes down to the same thing, right? That that there has been uh, an untruth told or there has been a truth told that is being denied. Mm. And uh, so to, to kind of explore this a little bit, we want to read Thomas Vincent. He has an exposition on the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Therefore, he goes through these Ten Commandments. And on the Ninth Commandment, he has a few things to say. Oh, all right. Question four. What doth the Ninth Commandment more particularly require in reference unto our own and others' good name? The ninth commandment doth more particularly require in reference unto our own and others good name, the maintaining and promoting thereof, especially in witness bearing. Mm. So what part of what's important here is that uh, you need to maintain and promote a good name. This means your reputation and your character. Yeah. Like when you, when like, so when you're like this guy that wrote the email, when your buddies say like, oh yeah, I signed, I signed that thing. Pfft, don't care. I'm going to do my thing. Those guys are throwing mud on their own name. Mm. They are they they are not seeking to have a good reputation. Yeah, it's kind of like when you're not supposed to smoke, uh, you know, fifteen feet by the door. Yeah, and and you smoke fifteen feet within fifteen feet. Yeah, mm. 
But that's not a law. Oh, oh, oh. What? I mean, it technically is a law. <laughs> it's not, it's I mean, not a law but, joke? But, you know, it's not, it's, it's, that just it, dawned on you? Just because like somebody <laughs> oh, humorously mm, puts up a sign mm. when there wasn't a sign doesn't mean... <laughs> Yeah, after that's Martha. what you get for the Usher thing in the last episode. Mm. Way to go. That's going to be your new nickname, though. Hashtag Usher. That's your new nickname, Usher. <laughs> Question five. How ought we to maintain and promote our own good name? We ought to maintain and promote our own good name by deserving it and defending it. See, I love that. Mm. I love that. So you, you, you should deserve this good name. Like, it's not just something that's just given to you. You got to earn right. that. You've you got to show that. And then you got to maintain it. Right, you got to yeah. maintain and defend your good name. You build up your reputation yeah. through days, months, years, right, of doing, being consistency, discipline. And I remember there was a guy in uh, in college. Now we were all dummies in college, right? Mm -hmm. But this guy was known as being the gross guy, and he would do really gross things and was always joking, and uh, it was funny. But he became known for this, and then. At one point, he stopped doing it, but no, none of us really noticed that he stopped doing it. And a couple months goes by, and we were all like dogging him about being the gross guy. And he said, guys, I haven't done any of that stuff in months. I, I, I've stopped doing that. And I, I remember realizing like, wow, first of all, I didn't notice. Maybe that's on me. Secondly, it takes a while to build up a reputation. Yeah. And if you're going to overcome something, it's going to take like that you've already built up. It takes time to undo that. So yeah, that's that's really, really good word from Thomas Vincent. But then he asks, um, how may we deserve a good name? And the answer is, although we can deserve nothing in the sight of God, yet we may deserve a good name in the sight of men by being good and doing good. Yeah. Pretty simple, yeah. right? Do the right thing. Uh, but doing good means like doing things in accordance with the will of God, doing things for the good of others. Yeah. Uh, this is how you build up your name. You break the covenant intentionally, willfully, habitually. You are not doing good. You are doing evil. Not because the thing that you might be doing is evil in and of itself, but because you are violating the promise that you made. Yeah, and he continues, uh, what is that which we may be and do that we may deserve a good name amongst men? That we may deserve a good name amongst men, we must be holy, mm. humble, harmless, wise, loving, patient, meek, just, righteous, sober, chaste, true, honest, and every way gracious and virtuous. As to our inward dispositions and affections, <laughs> our conversions also and actions must be correspondent, doing always those things which be praiseworthy and of good report. That is so good. That is challenging, but it's also inspiring because I want to be that way. Yeah. Like, that's the character that I want to have. I, you know, uh, uh, holy, humble, harmless. You, we could just, we, we should, you know what? That's an episode right there. That's an episode. I'm going to highlight that. Being holy, humble, and harmless. That's good. And so Joe, he, he finishes off here, mm -hmm. or at least this section. Why ought all to maintain and promote their own good name? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Like, so why? What's the What's the point? All ought to maintain and promote their own good name. One, because it is for the glory of God, which yeah. is the duty of all principally to aim at and to design their own honor only in subordination hereunto. Quote, let your light shine before men, right? So there's your good name, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven from Matthew 5, 16. He also quotes scripture, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation from First Peter chapter 2. Because a good name is precious and rendereth men the more useful one to another, causing mutual love unto and confidence in one another, whereby their mutual com concernments and advantage, both civil and spiritual, are exceedingly promoted. Quote, a good name is better than precious ointment from mm. Ecclesiastes 7. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver or gold. Mm. In other words, it's important, one, because it glorifies God, yeah. and two, because it promotes godly Christian community. It promotes the fellowship of the saints. You break the, the these sorts of promises and i know you maybe some people view them as small it's not a big deal you know like nobody's gonna know i had a guy uh, at moody you were 
all tobacco products were forbidden. There was no vaping back then, right? Because mm-hmm. you know, it was right after Moody founded the school, you know, when I was there. So, um, beat you to that one. Hey, so, uh, so, but there was a guy and he would smoke clove cigarettes in our dorm room. I'd come in and he'd be, and I'd be like, blowing it out the window. I'm like, bro, you can't, what are you doing? And he's like, it's not tobacco. <laughs> like, all right, man. We, <laughs> it's like, that's, you're breaking, you're breaking, the, you're breaking, yeah. the, you're, you're breaking the covenant. And, but here's the thing, because when your good name is being torn down, when your character is getting weak, people will trust you less. They'll look yep. to you less for help. Um, and you will be of less help to people. And of course, most importantly, you are not glorifying God. You are making much of yourself. So when you, when you, when you break a promise like this, when you lie, yeah. when you violate the ninth, you are ignoring God's law. Let's say that. Yeah. I mean, you, you know that we're called to obedience. You know that you're called to, to honor your word. And so you are, you're breaking God's law. It's not just about what uh, man has put before you there. Oh, go ahead. What? You had this look on your face. It's because you're eating. I'm enjoying my ham. Stop it. What do you, you had this like smug look while you're eating black ham. It's delicious. This is, so when you're doing that, yeah, you're, you're breaking God's law, but then also you're hating your brothers and sisters in Christ. How are you doing that? How, how does breaking the law, like in this situation, show the, uh, a hatred for brothers, for your brothers and sisters? Because you are, uh, those that are seeing this happen are watching you, uh, and they might themselves be led astray yeah, to follow e- after you because you're a bad, bad example. example. Totally, totally. And think about the people who have authority over you. Yeah. You're not loving them. No. You're not submitting to them as you're supposed to, as you're called to, as scripture calls you to. You're saying, no, I'm first. In fact, we can say that when you break this promise, when you lie, when you violate the ninth, you are being governed by pride. You're not being mm. filled with the spirit. You're not being controlled by the spirit. You're not being uh, compelled by God's word. You are being governed and controlled by pride. It's about you. And, and that's the truth. When you go about this, you're like, well, I'm just going to skirt it and just kind of do my own thing. and I don't even care. Um, you are about you. You're you're not about the Lord, and secondarily, you're not about your school or uh, your your work. You are about you, and that is something that we should repent of. Now, listen, we're not do- we're not trying to dog everybody who uh, has made this wrong decision uh, to break the their school or, or church, their school covenant or their um, or their work covenant, but uh, we are warning you that. This is dishonoring to God and dangerous to your own soul and detrimental to uh, your Christian life and your relationships. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DrDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. Fresh pot every Monday and Thursday. Blog post on Wednesdays. Later. You want some prosciutto? I'll take some.